Not to flex, but I'm pretty darn good at lowering your blood sugar. If I had just three days to drop my blood sugar before my next doctor's visit, here's exactly what I'd do. No fasting, no keto, no panic, just three days of real habits that will flatten your sugar fast and maybe even shock your doctor. I've seen patients drop their sugar 30, 60, and even honestly a couple hundred points in three days flat following this advice. I'm Dr. Yaz, quadruple board certified endocrinologist, obesity specialist, internal medicine doc, and board certified health coach, and I'm a diabetic myself. So I know what it feels like to dread the next appointment, to sit in your car thinking, what if my A1C is worse? What if I did everything right and my sugar still went up? Now, let's stop the spiral. Here's how we're going to get you feeling proud again with real numbers to back it up. When you eat food, any food, your body turns it into fuel, and that fuel is called glucose or blood sugar. But not all foods turn into glucose at the same speed. Foods like bread, rice, fruit, cereal, even juice turn into sugar quickly. And when your body already struggles with insulin, it can't keep up. And that means your blood sugar stays high for hours, even if you haven't eaten for a while. And if you eat again before it comes down, your sugar will climb even higher. And this is why some people eat healthy all day and still see sugars in the 200s and 300s. Now that's not meaning you're doing something terrible or bad or unhealthy. It's just that your body needs help processing food in a different way for now. So let's talk about carbs. What are carbs and why does your sugar spike with them? So carbohydrates or carbs, our food your body turns into sugar. This includes bread, tortillas, pasta, rice, potatoes, corn, cereal, oatmeal, crackers, snack bars, fruit, fruit juice. All of these go through your stomach, into your intestines, and then into your bloodstream as sugar. And when the sugar hits, your pancreas sends out insulin, a hormone that helps you move sugar out of the blood into your cells. And if your body doesn't respond well to insulin, which happens in insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, then sugar stays in your blood. And that's what we call a spike. So it's when your sugar jumps up too high, too fast, and stays there way too long. So if you literally look at your continuous glucose monitor or on your finger stick, you'll see the sugar is going up above goal and it's just staying there way too long. And this is what happens with uncontrolled diabetes. Now, how do I teach my patients to track glucose? See, most people only test their sugar first thing in the morning, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. So I teach my patients to do this. Check your sugar right before you eat. Then check your sugar right before your next meal after that. Why? Well, because this shows when the sugar went up too high and whether it came back down. If your sugar goes up more than 40 points from where you started, or it's still over 160, 150 before your next meal, then that last meal you ate was too much for your blood sugar right now. It doesn't mean that the food is bad or unhealthy. It just means your body wasn't able to process it well in this stage in your diabetes. And that's just information that's helpful for you. And it helps us adjust with real data, not guilt. So let me take you through my three-day reset plan. Let's walk exactly through what this plan looks like. Example, breakfast can be something like two eggs, scrambled in olive oil with a handful of spinach and maybe a quarter avocado, but no fruit, no toast, no cereal, no easy carbs at least. Vegetables technically have carbs like spinach, but not a lot, very negligible. Now why? Well, this is gonna give you protein, fat, and fiber to start your day off steady with your blood sugar. Now, mid morning is gonna look like this. You're not gonna snack unless you're truly hungry. And if you are, you're gonna have something again with protein, fiber, and fat. Think boiled egg or a cucumber with some hummus. Why? Because snacking too often is going to keep your insulin high. All right, lunch. Think something like grilled chicken on a bed of greens, olive oil, cucumbers, and some sliced almonds. Again, no bread, no wrap, no juice, no easy carbs, no rice. In this stage, when you're trying to lower your sugar quickly, I want you to focus on that protein, healthy fat, and fiber. Afternoon, no grazing, no snack, because you're probably not hungry if you had a high protein, proper fat, proper fiber meal. Maybe even go for a walk after lunch, because even 10 minutes can help your muscles pull sugar out of your blood very quickly. Now, dinner, salmon, ground turkey, steak, whatever kind of meat. I always say if it had a heartbeat before, it has protein, okay? Because people always say, what is protein? You know what? If it had a heartbeat, you're safe. No carbs, you're good. Unless you bread it, then you're in trouble. So again, we're talking healthy fats in the meat, healthy protein, fiber in the green vegetables, and olive oil, right? Fat that's going to keep things stable. And if your numbers have been stable, then that's when you can add some carbs during your day. But 
this is going to be in last. And you know, I talk about on the podcast all the time, nutrient sequencing. And moreover, if you're trying to lower your blood sugar quickly in three days, you're not going to do it right now. So you don't need that fruit for snack at night or sweet potatoes or whatever it is, fries, rice, pasta. You gotta always say bread, rice, pasta, fruit, juice, soda, alcohol right? You're going to not use those things right now. Even healthy grains, you know what I mean? Not right now. If you're trying to lower the blood sugar quickly and your sugar's quite high, it's just not the time for it. Now, evening. I want you to stop eating three hours before bed. Your body needs rest, not more digestion, not more sugar to deal with. Water. I want you to aim for 100 ounces of water per day. You can add some electrolytes, especially if you're feeling dehydrated. I have a lot of patients when their sugar is uncontrolled and they don't even know what their sugar is, they'll tell me I actually lost 10, 15 pounds. And usually that's water weight because their sugar was so high, they literally just lost a ton of water and electrolytes. So you may need some electrolytes with that water as well. So equally, hydration just as important. So why does my method work so well in my clinic? Well, when a patient walks in with sugars in the 300s, 400s, I don't panic. And sometimes, yes, I'll need to use a long-acting insulin for a very short period of time. I'm talking like a week, right? Like Lantus, Traceba, just a baby dose, just to curb the sugar if I know they're going to do my plan. But I tell them, if we're going to do this without insulin or without a lot of insulin in the beginning, right, when the sugar's completely out of whack, here's what we're going to do first. Because we don't have the option in the acute stage to say, wait on a GLP agonist, right? GLP-1 agonist like Ozempic or a combined GIP, GLP agonist like Manjaro, we need to do stuff short term because the doses for those start very low and work their way up each month. And so if someone comes to my office, yes, I may work on that prior health and get them on that medication, but I needed them to do this plan immediately or a graded insulin. And I prefer always to use less insulin, right? So in my office, I'll say, here's what we're going to do first. And I give them this exact plan and I track their numbers with them. And in three to five days, we just see the sugar coming down to normal levels. I'm talking 30, 60, 200 points drop if needed. And their energy starts to come back. They're starting to sleep better and their cravings are getting quieter. It's not magic. It's just biology and it's repeatable. Why is my plan repeatable? Well, if someone has insulin resistance and their insulin isn't working, especially acutely when they're glucotoxic or basically have sugars that are quite high, three, four, five hundreds, what we need to do is acutely get that sugar down. If we don't use carbs, which need a lot of insulin, well then... We're in business. Now, again, I know green vegetables have carbs. They're beautiful carbs. They have fiber. They're so good for you. We're not limiting those, but we are limiting bread, rice, pasta, fruit, juice, soda, alcohol. I say that list over and over and over because people don't realize these things do affect the insulin levels. So it's not magic. It's biology. It's repeatable. Now, I know this method may seem a little bit intense. Like I can't have any fruit. I can't do this. This isn't long-term. This is acutely, if you need to lower your sugar quickly, exactly the kind of food you're going to eat. So high protein, healthy fats, high fiber without the carbs that are going to spike the insulin, right? So basically green vegetables, meat, and a healthy fat. If you do this, right, not just meat, but like fish, you know, anything with a heartbeat at some point is going to serve your sugar right now in this acute phase. Eventually we will add the fruit back. And when we do it, we'll sequence it. We'll eat things in a certain order. So our fats, green vegetables, protein before the fruit, stuff like that. The order in which you eat matters. But in the acute phase, you need to be strict. And it may sound harsh, but the reality is you're going to die otherwise or wind up in the hospital with high blood sugars or wind up on insulin four times a day for months trying to get your blood sugar down. And I would much rather just get you controlled, get you on other life-saving medications if needed, at the same time work on other lifestyle methods that we can start to reverse your insulin resistance while incorporating things like weight loss if needed. And again, that's also part of my method. It's harsh, but this is the truth. So if you need to lower your sugar quickly, you follow this, you will have no problems. Attached in the description, I'll definitely make sure to include some meals so you get an idea so that you have something exactly to follow to quickly lower that sugar. Now, If you're feeling stuck, overwhelmed, or like your sugar just won't cooperate, you'll learn how your body works more than you have in months. So I want you to track your sugars, eat with intention, walk after meals, sleep with less insulin on board. And if you want help doing this day by day, grab the free printable reset guide or come join me in my diabetes app. You don't need to be perfect. You need a strategy. Let's get your sugar down one meal at a time. I'll see you guys next time. 